Listen, we've got a red hot headline here this morning that Aramco will start trading at the beginning of December. My question to you is this on the Tadal world, is that a smart move? Get 3% away, see how that goes. What's your take on that move? I think it is. Uh, and I, frankly, I think it's a tribute to uh, the new chairman, Yasila Rumanyans. Uh, he's a man in a hurry. He's executing Vision 2030. Yep. And I think it's a very, very important milestone. Get the company listed, start getting some multiples. There's also a lot of work to do for global analysts, portfolio managers, to realize what kind of company Aramco is. It's not just that it produces oil. You've got to look at the technology it's deployed, the way they've diversified to an internal pipeline system, the unbelievable level of technological advancement that has been invested in this company. It's a remarkable company from an operational standpoint. The listing will give an opportunity to investors and analysts around the world to focus on the fundamentals and the technicals. But there is a valuation gap, isn't, isn't there, between this, we understand this $2 trillion that MBS wants versus what the market wants. To close that gap, you've spoken to many, many global CEOs that make this move to the market. How did they close that gap? Is it through information? Well, I think part of the gap, is, of course, is through their relative scarcity. If you own a big portfolio of oil stocks, of energy stocks today, you have to own a Ramco. What are you going to do? You're going to sell, possibly, some of the other large holdings in your portfolio, companies that have higher production costs or are not so well positioned, and you're going to switch into a Ramco. So I think there'll be... I would expect some switching as part of existing portfolios to make room for Aramco and then boost the valuation. I know you no That's longer... A smart strategy. Smart strategy. Well, it's the flow of money, but I suppose herein lies the point. Where's the smart listing? Is it Hong Kong? Is it the LSE? Or is it New York? Now you're free. You're what free to you, talk. What do you expect me to say? I expect you to give me the smart, the smart capital answer. Well, let me put it in another way. Okay. I think the future of the exchange industry is through connectivity. What we did at the London Stock Exchange, with Shanghai Stock Exchange, why as a global company would you have to be forced to choose between three, four, five, a dozen global exchanges? Eventually, they will probably will be down to two or three global exchanges. They'll be connected. You won't have to make these choices anymore. But I do think that the company will eventually be listed in North America, in Europe, and in Asia. I think it will take some time. My bet is will be some of the other exchanges. I think London and New York will be part of it. I reserve my judgment on China. The surprise, I think, could be Shanghai. You think they could go? It would be a smart once, move to list in Shanghai? Once they, once they launch the international board. Of course, if you're listed in London today, you can also trade in Shanghai. Yes. That's the point. Through the connect. But in the long run, Shanghai, I believe, will take its rightful place as one of the top two or three exchange, global exchanges. Let me give one other hot topic another go. Let's see Let's see where we go. So you have your list of hot I've topics. I've got my list of hot topics. I'll try which, my best. Okay, so Hong Kong made the bid for the LSE, and it was good. I heard about that. That was a small deal. That was, that was a small issue. Do you think they will reapproach? I think the pressure, the economic pressure to harness and harvest the benefits of globalization, global compression on the clearing side, global collateral management, global capital formation, we talked about yes. listings, access to global intellectual property, data, indices, makes it inevitable, no matter what some governments are, are thinking or saying today, for the industry to continue to consolidate. And I think the end stage is we'll have two, maybe three, global exchanges. But t talk to me about that landscape. So do you, first of all, do you think the Hong Kong exchange, will come, somebody will come back and bid? Hong Kong exchange or somebody else will come and bid for the LSE? Well, the LSE is currently engaged in a, a large transaction in Refinitiv. So I think, you know, for the immediate future, the answer is probably no. They will probably go through this transaction. There's a, a fairly large integration job that's going to keep them busy for a number of years. Eventually, I do believe those consolidation pressures will resume. What about China to Hong Kong? Well, I think Hong Kong right now and, and China... In terms I, of exchange yes, combination. in terms of exchange combination. My own personal view, which I've expressed publicly, is China today has the opportunity to switch to a capital markets-based economy, unlike Europe, that choose to be based on bank and bank funding. We can see the results. Mm -hmm. So if China makes the switch, privatize the Shanghai Stock Exchange, will then be list. I would expect consolidation within China, 
between the Shanghai Exchange, the Clearing House, the China Financial Futures Exchange, and possibly the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. That could create a 200 to 250 billion dollar company. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about global financial infrastructure business. It's not the tiny, small, nationally configured exchanges catering to just a few companies. It is a global industry. It's coming on its own. And I do believe, again, that there'll be two or three that will emerge. We're, we're waiting to see what happens with Brexit, okay? He, he's still. I think we've been waiting for three years. We can wait a little while. We can wait a little more, but I don't get opportunities to talk to you very often. Francine caught up with the central bank governor, Mark Carney. He said, expect investment to come back. It's down by 25%. Do you expect, in a, in a transition period, if things go according to plan and there is an agreement, that we would see a very accelerated movement of capital back into the UK, which has dropped by 25% since Brexit? Your interpretation. Yeah, I think Governor is right that the, the last three years of uncertainty, of, of uh, increased uncertainty, investment has been put on hold. Yes. So if there is a transitional arrangement which suggests that the parties are coming together, investment will resume. But there's a but, and it's a fairly big but. The fairly long list, and there's thousands of them, of deeply involved technical issues. Yes. It could be things about clearing, about energy, migration, education, uh, etc. Legal zone. These have not been resolved. That will take many, many years, will require sovereign decisions by parliaments and governments on both sides. So I think investment, yes, will resume in the short term, but for the, the big, large infrastructure investments, I think companies will wait and see what the final resolution is in their particular area of operation. That will take some time. 